Well, hello. Sometime back, Adventure Denali did a video where she talked about her new Adler typewriter, mechanical typewriter. And I thought, well, that's kind of neat. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a Adler typewriter that basically lived in the closet that was underneath the stairs in the basement. And uh, my brother and I would play with it every so often. But, uh, you know, it was the 80s. We'd gotten a Texas instrument, a TI-99 4A, if you're interested. So we joined the 20th century. And, uh, you know, that was just a little more fun. But, you know, I'd, I'd go back to that Adler every so often because uh, one of the things I liked to do was write. And uh, I would write on it. And it was horrible. It, it would punch holes through the paper and stuff sometimes. The ribbon was all worn out. And my parents tried replacing the ribbon once. And, uh, yeah, they basically had to buy a ribbon and unroll the ribbon from the rolls it was on and put it on the rolls in the Adler. And, uh, yeah, at some point they got rid of it. Uh, my mother owned a uh, electric typewriter. I don't remember what its brand was. It was very 70s looking. Um, had the keys that flip up just like a regular mechanical typewriter. Um, and I, at some point, I don't know, seventh grade or so, decided I wanted a typewriter. So I bought, uh, our neighbor had a yard sale, and she had one for sale, which I wish I had kept, but I got rid of it at some point. Um, but it was a Smith Corona, kind of like the one you're going to see here, but with uh, two differences. One of the differences was it was electric. And the other difference was it did uh, some sort of a italic type of font or typeface i guess you would say sort of sort of a fancy typeface and uh so no good for publication but you know i'm 45 now and i still haven't published anything i've written <laughs> um because i enjoy the writing of it more than anything but anyway the important thing is typewriters now uh we did eventually get a word processor for the texas instrument if you can imagine it was uh, horrible, but I didn't know any better back then because that's all I knew. I, uh, but then in college, I got my first laptop and a compact Contura with uh, four megabytes of memory and uh, had Microsoft uh, Works on it. And I later brought the, uh, bought the Lotus Office Suite to put on it. Why Lotus? I don't know, but that's what I bought. And... Uh, so I word processed a lot with that. But uh, I've always been a hand writer. And uh, recently I've had some, uh, been looking at, you know, how can I get this stuff typed? Because, you know, the reason I don't, uh, one of the reasons I'm not published or haven't even tried is the typing. Sorry about that. <laughs> is the typing part of it. I uh, just don't like to type. And uh, I have a, right now I have a MacBook Pro I'm looking at that I bought last spring. And it's got the most god-awful keyboard you can imagine. The buttons travel like this teeny weeny little distance, and uh, I hate typing on it. Uh, I won't say my Windows machine that I use at work is much better, but, you know, I just don't like typing on a computer keyboard. I do it because I have to. Uh, so, you get this tactile feel from a from a typewriter so the typewriter i'm about to show you i purchased i was i don't know a senior in col in high school or maybe i was in college by then i did in high school buy um it was after i started working so it must have been sophomore or junior year i did buy a typewriter in col uh for high school and i bought it to use in college too but well, when we had the lap the tops i didn't need it it was a brother typewriter, I think. And it had, it was kind of cool looking. It had a daisy wheel and, uh, you know, you could change the typeface just by changing the daisy wheel, which was nice. Um, and it was electric. It even had a correction ribbon so you could backspace over your last few words and erase them, which, uh, big bonus because one of the problems with typewriters is you can't. But, um... Anyway, I used that, but then, like I said, college, we got the laptop. But somewhere in there, and I'm not sure if I was in college yet or still in high school, I was over in Wellsboro on my own for some reason, and I saw... Actually, I'll bet I was in college, because I feel like I was driving the Geo Prison then, which was the first car I owned, and I bought it to student teach. 
So anyway, I, I was driving around in Wellsboro and I saw this kind of flea markety antique store type of place. And I was looking probably for slide rules because I used to buy more of them. And saw this typewriter and bought it on a whim. And I remember $20. It was a mechanical Smith Corona typewriter. And uh, you're about to see it. So this is a big box. I don't even know if you can really see it all. But inside this big box, it's locked up nicely. So we'll hold a side view here. Very big, very heavy box. Very well made box. A little scuffed up, but so be it. So when I open the box, <laughs> I am uh, as zoomed out as I, oh, there we go. So when I open the box, it reveals this beauty. So this is a Smith Corona Silent Super Typewriter. So to get it out of the box, there's a little switch here I push. I lift the front, and then I just pull. Oops. And you can see here the mechanism that's just a... Uh, Pulls a little tab out of the front of it, and then there's some tabs back here that fit in the back. So this is the Smith Corona Silent Super. So let's take a look at a few features. So I'm going to be zooming in and out, of course, uh, but Let's start with the keyboard. So on the keyboard, you have all your buttons. One that uh, is kind of unique is this one, because a lot of contemporary typewriters did not have a one. Uh, they used the lowercase l for one. Uh, it also has right here a switch to reverse the direction the ribbon is going. This is a handy backspace. Uh, shift, shift lock and another shift over here. A few buttons you don't see anymore, like uh, we don't use the cent thing, we don't have separate fraction buttons anymore. No greater than or less than, which you'd find on modern computer keyboards. Uh, no square brackets, as I discovered to my dismay the other night. There's a tab key, there's a margin release key, and then this is for setting the tabs and for clearing the tabs. And then we can have black writing, which is represented by a blue dot, uh, no ribbon at all, which would be used for uh, mimeographs and such. And then red, because there's a red section to the ribbon. All right, let's, uh, of course, Smith Corona. Let's, oh, which, by the way, is still around. They just don't make typewriters anymore. Uh, let's open up the case. So you can see all the different letters and numbers. This one uh, seems to want to float free. Here's the ribbon. Here's a little switch that I can use to control how hard I have to press the buttons. And if you're ever looking for the serial number, it's printed right over here. I had to search for it. That's why I'm wondering, or why I know that. And then you can see all the different mechanism there underneath. Uh, these just c come up and hit the paper. Now uh, let's zoom in on them a little bit. Maybe not quite that much. There we go. So you can see each one of these has an upper and a lowercase letter on it. So what you do when you press shift, it just moves the whole thing down. And then the upper character strikes the page instead of the lower one. Which is a nice, I think, kind of clever arrangement. So we'll close the lid here. <clears throat> um, back here. We've got, we've got this agitator, so it'll bring the uh, ribbon up when I go to type, but then it drops it back down so I can see what I typed. Although, theoretically, you shouldn't be watching what you're typing anyway, because we're supposed to be touch typing, and some dust in there. This is very dusty. It's sat in my basement for years. Uh, let's go back a little further to the platen. Now, before I zoom out, I just want to show you a neat thing on the end of the platen here. 
lift this out of the way. You see this? 8, 11, 9, 10. That theoretically is supposed to be a guide to how much paper is left or how far you've gone down your paper. So you know if you're close to your, to your end of the sheet of paper. But then you have to load it correctly to do that. I don't know what the one, two, ooh, actually I bet the one, two on the side here are for uh, how far down you've gone on the page. That would make sense. Or maybe it's the back where that's how much is left. I don't know. Um, we have here, one, two, three, for single space, double space, triple space. We have our paper guide. And then in the back, this is for setting the margins. I've got another one at this end of the carriage somewhere. There. And then this little deal is just a paper release so that we can properly adjust the paper. And this little deal, oh, that's for lifting the platen out, I guess. <laughs> Which I don't care to do right now. We do have a crack in the metal there, but nothing uh, earth-shatteringly bad. And then we've got levers to let the carriage go back and forth. Uh, so this flips down. And wings to hold up your paper. So, uh, all in all, quite a lot to this. So let's load in a piece of paper, and we'll, I'm going to try to use the guide correctly, but I don't know. So, ideally, I just load it in like this. And hopefully it's lined up. If it's not, then I can release over here and line it up properly. So let's begin. I'm, I want to do an automatic centering. If, if you took an older typing class, you probably learned how to center. I did learn that at one time. Um, my computer typing, my typing class was actually done on an Apple IIe, but the program was just like a typewriter, so you had to learn to make tables, you had to learn how to center and everything. But let's just say you've got a 20 character title, so you find the center, and then you, you know, go back 10 characters. But uh, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to eyeball it. And that happens sometimes. Smith Corona Silent Super. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. So remember that was single space. So I'm going to tab. Oh, what, what, what? So I'm going to hit the margin release key. That's what it's there for. Yes, I do need to get some work done on this machine. Probably a new ribbon, too.
So, uh, wh why do I still have a typewriter? Well, to tell the honest truth, this is a really good machine. It cost me only $20. I picked it up at, I don't know, some flea market in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania, actually. And uh, I've just never felt like getting rid of it. Um, you know, a good machine like this, they don't make them like this anymore. That's why it's worth, uh, well, it caught, it's, if, if we convert the uh, original price to today's dollars, it would be uh, equivalent to about $1,200, which will get you a pretty decent laptop. So why get a typewriter? There's a different way of thinking when you use a typewriter. Uh, it's kind of like with a fountain pen, how you uh, have to slow down and your thoughts come at a slower speed. Uh, with a typewriter, you can go much faster than with a fountain pen, so that's a big advantage. Now, what you can't really do is edit. Like, if you look at my typing here, you'll see a few typos. Now, the reason that there's typos is because I can't go back and fix them. Uh, actually, I don't see too many typos, so I guess that's a good sign. But anyway, the moral of the story is you can't go back and fix it, or you're just like, oh, wait, I, I, I want to phrase that differently. Um, you, you can't do that. And uh, so a typewriter is a really good way to draft and get it in a typed form. I, uh, there are modern devices sold that way. Uh, I mentioned in the video description something called an Astro House Freewrite. But... Uh, it's just a different way of thinking when you use a typewriter. Okay, I am straddling the tripod to get you this view, so pardon me if my typing isn't so good right now. I'm going to switch to the middle setting. No ribbon. That has to do with mimeographs, so that you could almost like stencils punch through the wax on the mimeograph, and then you could make copies where it would squeeze ink through those uh, holes that were left by doing this. But uh, nowadays, of course, not much use for that setting. I like how you can just kind of, oh, I can flip my light up again. I had to flip it down for my talky stuff. Oh, that's not an apostrophe. Oh, well. Got to keep going. I refuse. <laughs> and it's the 21st century, so I'll probably that technology is obsolete. But, as I am about to explain, I think there is still a place for typewriters. And if you want a typewriter, yes, there are modern typewriters. I have a video or two about modern mechanical typewriters that I linked to. But you don't have to buy one of them for $190 or whatever it is. Uh, you can get an older typewriter from the 50s, 60s, or 70s even an electric one if you want, that's going to be much higher quality and is still working after all these years. Now, this one dates from 1956, which puts it about 65 years old. And, yeah, it's got a couple things wrong with it, but uh, easy to fix, which I may have to do now if I'm going to be using it more often. And, uh, you know, try getting this now. This This... There's a blog article I linked to that gives you the equivalent cost. This is a machine that uh, the previous owner would have saved up for for a long time and put on, uh, you know, would, would have just been so excited to get, kind of like how you might with a laptop now, only with a plan of it lasting a lot longer than the laptop. So uh, I think this is just a quite a good machine. And I'm happy I have it. So, let's talk. 
so that's my Smith Corona story. That's how, uh, that, that's the typewriter. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about why would you write on a typewriter? So you saw this one does need a little repair work, a little TLC at least. Uh, some of the keys stick. Some of them are a little slow. Um, so probably I need to clean it. and Well, you have to be careful with oil with a typewriter, but clean it probably, definitely. So the advantage of writing on a typewriter is it's fast. Writing with my fountain pens is not fast. Uh, but you have that tactile experience. You know, you're actually physically moving the buttons quite a long ways, which uh, is a reason why people like mechanical keyboards nowadays for computers. Uh, they're just, I, I said at the beginning, I don't like typing on my laptop. Mechanical t keyboards are much nicer. Um, noisier. <laughs> a few years ago, and when I say a few, I mean quite a few, I made a Linux thin client lab in my classroom. So I had a one computer that I, um, I bought with my money that acted kind of as the brain, like a mainframe. And then I would just take junkers from around the school that were going to be thrown away, and they would be the thin clients. So all the thinking would happen on my machine, but then these junkers would all, you know, the kids could be on them, they could get on the internet, and they could do uh, different things, and at least we'd have something. It was back then the kids didn't all have laptops. And... Uh, some of them had, one of the computers I remember had the coolest keyboard, because except I had to put it away because it was so noisy. It would click, you know, every button, click. And, uh, you know, it felt good to type on it, but it was really annoying when kids were using it. So I had to hide it away. I wish I had realized then what I, what a, what I had in that keyboard, but I didn't. Uh, so I don't know what's happened to it. I probably threw it away at some point. But, uh. Anyway, the important thing is, uh, it was a mechanical keyboard. Uh, keyboards have gotten less mechanical. They're, uh, you know, much less downstroke when you push the buttons. And uh, it's just a, not a satisfying feel to type on a computer keyboard. Now, the advantage of computers is you can go back and you can edit. Uh, you can move stuff around. You can save it. <laughs> Uh, it'll spell check for you, it'll grammar check, and all that good stuff. But uh, there is a lot missing from that experience. With the typewriter, you just go. If you've got a typo, unless this is for production, you just go with it and say, well, I got a typo. Uh, if, if you decide you want to rephrase something, well, too bad. You know, go back in with your pencil later and mark up what you want to change. But what that does is allows you to rapidly produce copy, a draft, and you're not stuck with the ways you can get stuck on a computer. Because I know, especially if it's, maybe I'm not in the mood, it is easy with the computer to get caught up in, hmm, what font should I use? Hmm, boldface. Should I italicize this? Oh, you know, all these formatting options and things that can just drive you nuts. Uh, I uh, do more with LaTeX a lot, so uh, a lot of those traces are taken away, which is good. Um, and that actually woke me up to a lot of the limitations of a word processor. But you still have all those other distractions. The nice thing with the typewriter is you can just go. Uh, I was watching a Joe Van Cleef video where he was talking about, uh, well, he was complaining about electric typewriters. He and his friend had a, uh, I guess he and his friend were hanging out with typewriters, which I guess you do when you're Joe Van Cleef. But he was, um, one of the typewriters was electric, one was manual, and he was talking about how the, you know, the electric is so noisy and because uh, it has the motor running and you have to bring an electric cord out for it. And you can't just compose when the mood strikes you. Whereas with the mechanical, you can. And I thought, well, that's true. I don't know if I would, but I could take the Smith Corona outside and type. Actually, I could do that with my laptop too until the battery runs dead, which it has been doing this afternoon because I, I filmed, I forget how many pen reviews. Let's see. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Nine. I filmed nine different pen reviews on it this afternoon. So yeah, the battery's a little dead. So um, to finish up my nine pen reviews, I had to bring over the charger. And so it's slowly charging now. But 
Anyway, the moral of the story is mechanical typewriter, you just go. So big advantage to it. Noisy, heavy, um, definitely won't set it in your lap. Uh, your legs will fall asleep if you do. But uh, yeah, it, it's a different tool, a different way of looking at typing. Uh, do I want to do my work on it? Oh, hell no. I'll stick with my nice laptop. But for a different way of thinking, yeah, it, it gets you more in contact. And you can do OCR, which is optical character recognition, on your typed pages and get them onto your computer. Uh, is it the best? Depends. Uh, one of the things that has come up in my uh, research on this topic is the Astro House Freewrite. And you'll see a rather extensive video I uh, put in my collection of links down below about the Astro House Freewrite that uh, takes a look at some of the different aspects of using an, uh, that device. It's... Um, Seems to have some of the, you know, a lot of the advantages of the typewriter, but yet syncs to the cloud. Um, I don't know. It, the, the, the idea actually holds a lot of appeal, and I can see why. It's a writer's tool. It's not a everyday person's tool. It's a tool for a writer. So we'll see. Maybe that's in my future. <laughs> Uh, I, I did find that very tempting. You know, and it's not the distraction thing. If I have to sit down and work, I'll sit down and work. Uh, I, I've never had a real problem with that. Except when I don't want to work and then I'll find something to distract me with. I don't need to be on a computer to be distracted. I uh, One of my favorite ways to distract myself is cleaning, actually. Oh, but I can't sit down and crack papers till I put away all these stuff and oh got to deal with the dust and you know <laughs> that's me so uh but there is some appeal to that just sit down and write and do so quickly rather than uh, sit down and compose and think and go back and edit because the computer i see more as an editing tool than a composing tool and that's why i've always liked to hand write my stuff with a fountain pen because i compose you know, I may cross out words and things, but I'm composing. And usually I'm not thinking about plot at that point because I've got an outline. I'm just, what words am I going to use to express the plot? Um, similar to how I, I go about these videos. I'll have an outline. I just won't have uh, my script. I compose as I go along. I just know these are the points I want to hit. So, uh, yeah, just a different way of composing, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, so I want to thank Adventure Denali for inspiring me to get this tool out. Uh, maybe I don't need to think about an Astro House free write. Maybe I have what I need right here in the Smith Corona machine. So one thing I found interesting, and if you saw the typing sample, ooh, I, sh I should have typed some red. Maybe I'll go back and film that again. I've got about 10 minutes of battery left on the camcorder. I, uh, one thing that I found interesting, that machine is so well made. Oh, and where I thought it was broken in the carriage, it's not. That's actually a panel that flips back, as I discovered, after filming it. So I never knew that panel existed till after I filmed it and accidentally, uh, bumped it. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, may have a $20 Astro House free write just by virtue of having this typewriter. And it... I was worried about my desk, and I think I wouldn't want to use it on my desk long term because it is heavy and my desk isn't the sturdiest. But maybe it's a good kitchen table type of deal. Um, but yeah, I could just, I liked right typing on it. I, I got to get those keys working properly. But you, you just, the words come out, and uh, you can't worry about fixing them because you can't fix them anyway. And you just go. And that holds a lot of appeal to me. Make of that what you will. <laughs>